Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Voices for Change 2.0, the only podcast that focuses on mental health while mixing in movies, music, books, sports, and pop culture. Here are your hosts, Rebecca and Joe Lombardo. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are happy to be with you today. We hope you are having a great Saturday so far. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedules to listen to our humble little show. We are grateful to have you with us today. And we're lucky to be able to even be doing this, (laughs) excuse me, today because we still don't have cable or internet in our house. And thankfully, our internet provider is different from our cell phone provider. So we're able to use our cell phone as an internet hotspot to be able to (laughs) hook up our computer and our microphone and everything. It's so so ridiculous. You know, it. If I told you guys what we're actually going through with our internet and our our cable right now, you would be blown away. It's 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 unbelievable. And we won't mention any names of any companies. No, I'm really trying to bite my tongue. But yeah, uh, yeah, someone is actually climbing the pole and unhooking our service. It's ridiculous. And it has to be a tech from some company. It can't just be, you know. Some random Joe some, Blow some, off the pub, yeah. off, the, off the street. So that's that's the fun that we're having right now. But we, uh, the important part is that we're with you and we can do the show today. So let's get on into it, shall that's, we? That's right, baby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, pardon me, I'm losing my voice again This is the third week in a row I think that yeah. we get on here and I start losing my voice It's because so, you're excited At the uh, beginning of our show You usually hear the the opening It says you'll hear, you know, we're the only mental health podcast That includes movies, music, sports, TV, and books Well, we decided that we haven't been including enough of those other topics So I reached out to a lovely friend of mine that just happens to be the vice president of communications with a company called Kinetic Content, and they are the creators of shows like the entire Little Women franchise that I am so addicted to. She really is. Yeah, 100% addicted (laughs) to it, and I thought it would be fun to get her perspective on the shows, so she's here with us today so please welcome paria sadiga hello I'm sorry, how are you guys oh no worries <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys thank you so much for having me oh it's our pleasure having having you on paria uh per- <laughs> paria paria i i am Don't tripping worry. over my mouth today it, i'm embarrassed <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Don't worry. it's, it's a okay. difficult name <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well it's I I can does speak not so good, so <laughs> yeah it's it's I know it's early for you but it's early for us too so yeah we'll we'll get together and I promise <laughs> I promise that'll be the last mistake we'll make on it it'll it'll only get better <laughs> I love it I love it <laughs> so how how's your morning going not too bad I'll be very honest I just woke up <laughs> yay so I'm sorry it's for the bus. sleepy voice. <laughs> oh no no no! It's it's fine. We call that smoky. So yeah, I like it. I'll take that. <laughs> yep. All right. So if you don't have any questions for us, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Sure. So sure, let's do it. Okay. Great. So when did you first know that you wanted to work in television? You know, I was four years old when I remember saying that I wanted to be a war correspondent. Um, I always wow. wanted to, yeah, I always wanted to tell the stories that I thought, especially at that age, that not a lot of people would be signing up to tell. Um, I, I'm from the Middle East, and I think just innately I know that there's so much going on in the world outside of the United States. And um, I could see even at that young of an age that there wasn't quite the spotlight on on those stories. And I wanted to be the person, um, boots on the ground, on the front lines, telling the stories, being the voice 
um, for those people. Excuse me. And I continued my journey studying, reading. Um, I, I wrote my very first book about nothing really um, at the age of, I think it was nine or 10. It was 300 pages. And actually last summer I wound up burning it because I was so embarrassed that I would write such a book. Um, but I'd always been very, um, you know, into reading and writing and t- uh, asking questions um, even as a little kid, my mom would always say that I'd be the little girl in the group with all the adults because I loved conversations and I loved in-depth conversations. And my, you know, kids my age weren't having, I guess, the conversations I wanted to have. Um, <laughs> so I, I, you know, continued on that path and I was very lucky. I um, got into the University of Oregon and um, I study journalism, broadcast journalism, and the Oregon program is a five-year program. And your last mm. year, you, you, you learn everything. You learn how to shoot. You learn how to edit. You learn how to light everything from two people to seven people. Um, they're very big on, you know, making sure you know every aspect of television making. And then you're given the chance to apply those techniques and skill sets to, you know, real life things, which was really amazing. And, um, and right out of college, I actually wound up getting really, really lucky. Um, I don't know how much, how in depth you want me to go in with this, but I basically (laughs) ended up getting a job getting a job right out of college at ABC network news, which I always say network is kind of like the NFL of football. So I bypassed, you know, a lot of the smaller um, teams, if you will. And I went straight for the big leagues, which was incredible. Um, And I started out as a desk assistant in the Los Angeles Bureau. And I think once they realized that I could shoot and edit and do all those kinds of things, they had me go out and shoot elements for um, like our our, uh, world news packages. And I was uh, producing live shots and really within six months, I think because our bureau was so small, we all got to wear a lot of hats and we were immediately challenged with really cool jobs. So um, pretty amazing that I wound up living the dream and doing what I wanted to do. I never made it out to cover any war stories, but um, I still got to work alongside the best of the best. And that's something that I never, ever, even though I was so young, I never took that for granted. I'd walk the hallways and just think to myself, some of the greats walk through these hallways, Peter Jennings, you know, Charlie Gibson, Mm -hmm. when people, when the uh, New York anchors would come to LA, they would film out of that bureau. And it was magical. It really was magical. That's really cool. You know, yeah, Um, yeah, I mean, that's, (laughs) you know, and to to jump, you know, right out of college, right into, uh, you know, getting into the big leagues that quickly. You know, I, I actually, I went to. There's a broadcasting school here locally in Detroit. Um, I don't, I don't know if you ever heard of it, Specs Howard School of Media Arts. Um, mm-hmm. I went there back in the '90s, and it was at the time it was uh, just an eight month program, so nothing, nothing as in depth as what you went through with uh, University of Oregon. But you know, they still. You know, they taught you how to shoot and, you know, lighting and, you know, Mm -hmm. script writing and all that stuff. And, you know, when you graduated from there, it was with the expectation of, all right, I'm going to start out doing farm reports out in the middle of nowhere for (laughs) my first couple of years, you know. And (laughs) that that can put people off from it, you know. And uh, so I'm just nothing but but crazy respect that you were able to to jump in with both feet like that. That's exciting, man. I tell you. (laughs) Thank you. I, you know, I was ready. I was um, I was ready to go to a small town and really, truly work my way up. I, I I got really lucky that I actually knew somebody in the industry who um, 
um, Brian Rooney. I actually um, ended up interviewing him while I was in college because years before I had babysat uh, his daughters, and I'd never really met Brian. I mostly interacted mm-hmm. with his girls and his wife, but knowing that I was, you know, babysitting his girls, Andy Rooney's son and Brian, who was just he one of the best of the best. It was always even that little bit of you know knowing I was kind of in the in the guy's house was so, so cool. Um, and then when I was in college, I was asked to write a report on somebody still in the industry. And I thought, let me see if Brian will give me, you know, some time as busy as he is. And he was so gracious and so wonderful. And he said to me, he said, next time you're in LA, I'd love to have you come and take a tour of the bureau. And I was like, I would love that. And of course, I'm somebody who you say that to me and I'm going to never want to bother you about it again. And um, (laughs) I guess lightning in a bottle happened twice for me because I happened to see him and his wife at my godparents Hanukkah party because they're all neighbors. And when he Mm. saw me in LA, he goes, I told you next time you're in LA, I want to take you on a tour tomorrow. We're going on a tour. It was so lovely. And if oh. that had not happened, I promise you, I would have never approached him and I would have never bothered him about it. And we, he took me in and it was like my Disneyland. And I um, <laughs> suddenly it turned from a tour to kind of an interview. He had set up a meeting with me and the bureau chief. And the bureau chief and I sat down and we spoke for almost like 40, 45 minutes about everything. A lot of sports talk. <laughs> and mm. yeah. he... Um, He asked me, you know, if when I'm done with college, if I would want to come back to L.A. and work as a desk assistant. And I'll never forget, I said to him, I'm so embarrassed now, but I said to him, I will clean toilets to work here. And he laughed. (laughs) and, um, And, you know, he kept to his promise. I left Oregon within two days of graduating, moved back to L.A., and started immediately at ABC. That's awesome. What a yeah. great story. Yeah, that's <laughs> and that's inspiring, you know, and it, and, it, and it just shows, you know, fortune favors the bull. You know, it uh, really does. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> so that's when did you start? To say. <laughs> I don't feel very bold. <laughs> no, 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 no. It, the the fact that you, you went through, I'd have been like, oh, no, no, that's okay. Thank you very much. And <laughs> I, I would be off probably scrubbing toilets somewhere and, no. you know. Albuquerque or something, you know, <laughs> not not to knock Albuquerque. I love Albuquerque. I'm just I'm putting that out there. Sorry, Albuquerque. Sorry, Albuquerque. We lo- I have been through your town. It's a beautiful town. I love you. So, um. <laughs> keep the m- mean tweets to yourselves. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, when did you start working for Kinetic Content? So I was at ABC a little over three years, and. Um, it was really sad. Um, there were some major, major layoffs happening. And, mm. you know, I knew I was safe because, A, I wasn't making the money all the higher-ups were making, but mostly I wasn't on camera talent. Um, but it was really scary. I think that one year we had laid off like 350. I don't want to use I – don't, I, don't, I don't remember the number, but it was a massive layoff. And wow. the only person out of the L.A. Bureau that we all knew was without, you know, with no question about it was safe, was one of our Nightline producers. And one week he comes in to the, uh, um, the, uh, our assignment desk and he announces to like four or five of us, I'm leaving ABC. And we were wow. shocked because – so many were losing their jobs and we knew he was untouchable. And mm-hmm. we asked him like, what would you leave? We, if, you immediately assume it's for another um, news gig. And he said there was a new production company um, that had started and he was given an offer and he was taking it. And then um, a week or two later, perhaps, I don't know why, but I decided to check my junk email. I never, ever, ever, (laughs) ever check my junk email, and I did. And he had sent me an email saying, um, you know, send me your resume. And I do, I look back on that, and I always think I could have missed 
the opportunity to be at Kinetic because I was this close. Had I not seen that email, he wouldn't have followed up. He would have just taken my lack of responding as a lack of interest in the gig, you know. Right. Um, so yeah. I, I, res- I responded immediately. I sent him my resume. And and I still quite don't know what compelled me to do that because I was, you know, I was at my dream job. And I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm doing this. Let me, I like a good challenge. Let me see if this will go anywhere. And a week later, he brought me in to meet with the CEO. And um, I really felt like I had bombed that interview because one of the first mm-hmm. questions um, the CEO asked me was, uh, do you watch reality TV? I'm a horrible liar. So I just was like, no, I don't. I watch a lot of news. I'm a news junkie. You know, I watch my competition. I watch the Today Show and CBS. And um, that's kind of what I do. And in my head, I thought, God, I could have prepared for this a little better. (laughs) And I could have (laughs) at least come in with a handful of reality TV show names. And um, I left his office. And I thought, well, that was a good interviewing, you know, practice. But I won't get that job. But that night, my old colleague called me and said, you know, uh, Chris loved you and wants wants to offer you the job. And I was stunned. And I, I, um, you know, I asked to to sleep on it. And he said to me, he goes, I know it's a move backwards. And I know you know nothing about reality TV. And I know you're not going to make any money up front. But you are going to want to work for this guy. Not only is this company hmm. going to explode, but he is, you're just, I promise you, you're going to want to work for him. And I really trusted my old colleague a lot. I'd seen the career path he paved for himself and all that he'd done. So I did my research right. on the CEO, and I loved everything I read about him. And the next day I went to ABC, and I, I broke the news that I, too, would be leaving for this new company and my bureau chief and my deputy bureau chief ind- independently took me into their offices. Like, is there anything we can say to change your mind? And <laughs> are you sure you want to do this? And they were so mad at my old colleague when he came into the, when he was like cleaning out his office or like, you're taking Pari too, which is really, really <laughs> sweet. Um, and my bureau chief, he is one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life such a good man. He said to me, he's all like, if you ever decide to leave, you always have an open door here. And that made me feel so comfortable because, you know, it's a startup. You don't know what a startup, what will happen with with a startup. I felt like the CEO was the kind of guy who would not fail at anything he put his hands to. So I wasn't too concerned, but so comforting to know, especially since I was so young and you never know if it's kind of a reckless move you're making. I was so happy to know that I'd have, you know, a job to fall back on should this one not work. And um, lo and behold, I started as a desk assistant. Um, You know, you you go as a startup, you're buying furniture and office supplies and pretty, again, I I hate to keep using this word, but pretty magical to kind of be (laughs) at the very ground floor and help grow a company to see the growing pains and to see the people who come and go and to just feel like with your hands, you're helping assemble something that you truly hope will turn into something um, magnificent. And I'm very lucky now, seven years later, to say that Kinetic is thriving. We went from, you know, 1,600 square feet to almost 60,000 square feet. It's one of the things I I truly love, especially my job is kind of to brag about the company and to brag about my (laughs) colleagues. And I love bragging about that because it speaks volumes about my boss and also my colleagues that, you know, it's grown to this place where we have at any given time, 17 shows in production and on the air we, you know, we're, we're buzzing. We're buzzing. There's so many people who come and go. And I, I think we have a pretty good reputation. I, I you know, I'm, I'm not going to stamp my name to it, but I, I feel like people are always like, I want to come back and work at Kinetic because it's a very freelance-based um, industry. You know, you bring mm-hmm. editors and producers in and story producers and post supervisors and everyone's very much freelance, but we definitely keep the great ones. Like you'll see a lot of the same faces and 
and yeah, it's just, it's an exciting time to be in reality television. And, and I feel very, very lucky to play a very small role in making it happen. Wow. That's, that's really cool. You know, yeah, and it's, great story. it's, it's, uh, it's awesome when you get in on the ground floor of something and it just takes off like that, you know, <clears throat> you know, I know just from hanging out, watching all the different shows with Beck, <clears throat> you know, they're very well produced and, Aww. you know, just a lot of, a lot of good riveting content. I get sucked in watching this stuff and <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's not, it's not my bag, you know, but mm-hmm. I I will watch it with her and be like, okay, what's going on with Tara? What's going on with, you know, this person or that person? And, <laughs> you know, I just, I'm like, what am I doing? I'm like, hey, where's, where's, turn on football or something for God's sake. Oh, but I'm, I'm going but to no, I'm you. sucked in. Joe, Joe from uh-huh. the women in LA, Tara's husband says, real men watch Lifetime. That's his tagline. <laughs> <laughs> I, so. and, and just putting this out there because we, because we've talked with him. We've interviewed him. Yeah. We we love Joe. I love Joe. Yeah. I think he's just the awesome. He's so funny. He's just he's mm-hmm. great. You know, he's fantastic. Tara, Tara, and Joe are the are the reason that my Joe will watch the show because the stuff that comes out of uh, <laughs> Mr. Nafo's mouth. Mr. Nafo's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> It's just absolutely hilarious. It's priceless. He's so funny. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's absolutely priceless. Yeah, he he really is. And I'm I'm hoping someday his his cover band makes it to Detroit. Um, just because I I would go and see him, and I would love to hang out and have a drink with the guy. Yeah, really. You know, so but many, that, so many people say that about Joe too. Like, I just want to sit down and have a beer with him. He's just whether uh, you've met him or not, you can tell he's just salt of the earth. And and, and mm-hmm. amazing, and he's so much fun to be around. He really, I I, I leave every conversation with Joe with a six pack. That's that's not really <laughs> true, but I feel like I've, I, I I got a six pack from laughing as hard as I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on that on that note, no, we yeah. are going to take a quick break. Um, we're going to be listening to Trevor Page with American Dream.
Hey, welcome back to Voices for Change 2.0. We are glad to have you with us today. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I, sp- <laughs> I spaced out there a second. Um, welcome back. We are talking. <laughs> I, I got to get over myself this morning. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm yeah. giggly. Yeah, you're, so. you're having an episode. Today. I, am. I don't know it's, what's going on bad. with you. We're talking with uh, Paria Siddiqui. Did I say it right? Perfect. Nailed it. Yay. I got it. I'm like doing it in my head. I'm like, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. All right. And we're just really glad to have her with us today. Yes. And we're going to pick up where we left off. So, uh, Faria, what is your uh, position with kinetic content? So the official title is Vice President of Communications. In essence, that means I oversee all things um, PR and press-related, social media and um, digital, so the strategies implemented in those three categories uh, for our shows and our talent. Mm -hmm. I oversee those, and I work hand-in-hand with my network counterparts because we sell shows to every network. So I work hand in hand with my network counterparts and making sure that we do our best job of telling the story on a um, on different platforms, whether it be via social media or um, you know on YouTube or on the network's website. Um, and also my big, big, big responsibility, even just personally, but I know it's a huge factor of my job is making sure. I bring, um, I personally know it, that sounded so strange, but that I help bring eyeballs to our shows. So when we launch a show, you know, I help initiate with, with the team and with the network um, as much PR and press around the show to make sure uh, people out there know that a new show is about to come either back on the air or is about mm-hmm. to premiere for the first time ever. And then week to week, I try to um, garner press via either interviews with talent or exclusive clips to try to make sure that we build buzz every single week around our shows that are on the air. So it's really fun because on any given day, um, my world looks very different. I, you know, I also handle talent relations. So I'm kind of the point person for our talent who more often than not are not television natives. They're very new Mm -hmm. to the landscape. And I take that responsibility also very seriously. I try to make them feel at home and it's very important to me that they know how much we as a production company love them and want to protect them no matter what their role is on our show. Um, I, my, my boss, my, our CEO comes from an agency background. He was an agent in the past. So, you know, talent is very important to him, too. And I, again, I I try to apply that importance to everyone I work with. So, um, again, any given day, I can either be on set with someone on Access Hollywood or I am in my office, you know, writing up uh, multiple pitches and thinking of ways to continue to help put Kinetic on the map or I'll be on set on one of our shows behind the scenes, helping either produce or, um, you know, coming up with PR and marketing uh, strategies. So the network will send a photographer, for instance, um, to set, and we will make sure we get all of the PR images in a, a ahead of time for, for that show to help us make, um, make noise around the show when it does premiere. So... I love it because leaving news, one of the things initially my first year or two at Kinetic Kinetic that I really did miss was the urgency in in storytelling. You know, every single day we had multiple live shows at ABC. So I always was uh, moving at 300 miles per hour. I think my, my deputy bureau chief one day actually called me out in the, in the newsroom as like the fastest person to get around town because again I took I took that so seriously like oh my god I can't be the reason because I didn't bring back footage or I didn't bring back good enough interview I can't be the reason our our package goes black on world news tonight (laughs) so so I didn't miss 
the speed and the pace and the urgency behind news. And I think now, while there isn't quite that pace, I still get to see different things and do different things in, in my department. And I so love that. I love that. It's my, it's my favorite. Outside of bragging about my colleagues, that aspect of my job has to be my favorite part. Cool, and that's, that's a, and that's a that good you love your job. yeah, it's a good work ethic too. You know, mm-hmm. um, having that that feeling of responsibility. You know, both when you were at ABC and and now with with what you're doing, um, that's just it's you know, kids take note. If you want to be mm-hmm. successful in life, you got to have a good work ethic. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, what TV shows? I also uh, think, have, by the way, um, one more thing since you said that to the kids. Sure. I also think one thing for especially if you guys have any young viewers, but really anybody, if you keep in mind that no matter where you are in your career, you're never too big to do any role, I think that will help you a lot. I don't think I would have taken the gig as kinetic if in my mind I thought, well, I don't want to be an assistant again. I've paid my dues. You know, I don't want to start over and buy you know, furniture and, and, and crafty and do all of that. Like I, last week I was producing alongside Diane Sawyer for world news. And this week I'm, you know, at a brand new company and all I'm doing is, you know, ordering furniture that would have really set me back if that was important to me. So I think for young kids or really truly anybody who wants to make that change, but is scared, don't worry about starting over and don't make it, don't let your ego overpower where you could ultimately mm-hmm. end up going. Cause it really, the right. ride alone is so worth it. Exactly. That's what I was going to, I was going to say roughly the same thing. Don't let ego get in the way of where you're going, you know? Absolutely. So, um, what TV shows is, uh, are, are, but just butchering that kinetic content what what tv shows have they produced obviously we've spoken about the little women franchise already yeah. but right what, what else have they have they put together yeah thank you thank you for for the opportunity to talk about all of our shows so yes definitely mm. little women is a huge franchise for us multiple spinoffs in multiple cities and of course tara's little family and we've got another mm-hmm. little show that we are, will be announcing here soon that I'm very, very excited to announce with, well, for, with you know, to everyone. Um, and then mm-hmm. we do, um, we've got the Married at First Sight franchise, which is huge. It recently mm-hmm. went from FYI and Amy on to Lifetime, so it now also airs on Lifetime. We are in our sixth uh, season, which I'm so proud of and so excited about. And uh, that season will be in Boston. We're currently Hmm. in production, which is very exciting. And we um, also have married at first sight. We've also had multiple spinoffs. We had the first year. We had um, second chances. And then um, some short form shows, you know, uh, unfiltered confessions and married life. And then we do a lot of cooking shows we've had um multiple Mm. seasons of the taste on abc with anthony bourdain and nigella lawson that is no longer on the air but what a Mm -hmm. cool show to work on i really i really miss the taste i wish we could bring it back (laughs) in some capacity um and then we did uh man versus child for fyi another really fun show with some of the (laughs) most talented young chefs prodigies I've ever met in my life. These are kids who are not only chefs, but also excelled in everything they did in their lives. Um, Schoolwork, extracurricular activities, like geniuses, truly. Um, I I always felt really, really dumb talking to these kids. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We we have another show, um, uh, Man vs. Master, that is slated to start on FYI, hopefully in September, which I'm also very excited about. And uh, another show on ABC we had called um, My Diet is Better Better Than Yours with Sean T, which was super cool and fun to work with, um, work for and work on. And then um, in the past we did Off Their Rockers with Betty White for both NBC and Lifetime. Oh, yeah. That was super cool. I think we had 
three, four seasons of that show. And to say that I worked with Betty White on set is something I never really thought would come out of my mouth. So uh, (laughs) grateful for that opportunity. (laughs) And um, Seven Year Switch, another huge, huge show for us where we basically, it's, in the easiest and fastest way to explain it, it's the real life wife swap. We take marriages that are quite frankly on the brink of divorce and we have them um, swap partners with people who we heard them say basically they wished they had married and we test the theory behind is the grass truly greener on the other side? Um, and wow. it is, it's a, it's a social experiment. It's super loud. And I'm hoping we'll be back for a third season with that one. Cause I love, love, love working on that show and seeing how people really do do everything they can to try to save their marriage. Even something that sounds as crazy and wild as this one. And currently <laughs> on TLC on Sunday nights, we have one of my favorite shows called Spouse House, where we bring Mm. in um, seven single women and seven single men from the Chicago area. We move them into a house in Malibu. And these are folks who want to get married. They are done with the dating scene, truly, truly just done with the dating scene. They want to move on to the next steps in their lives. They want to start their families. They're, most of them are in really great places in their careers. The only thing mm-hmm. missing for them is their life partner. And we have two incredible experts who help, you know, with um, assignments and with pairing and really testing them to their limits to remind them of why they are in the spouse house, why this accelerated space works for people who are truly set on get, getting married. And we had mm-hmm. our first wedding uh, air on the spouse house two weeks ago. And this Sunday, we will see tomorrow, tomorrow night, we will see um, our second wedding happen. And again, oh, wow. using this corny word, it's so magical to see people <laughs> who uh, want love and marriage will do anything to make it happen, who trust us with the process, and then to see them walk down the aisle and, you know, um, make these vows to each other is truly special. So Sunday night, Spouse House on TLC, 10, 9 Central. If you're not watching it, you are missing out. I promise you. <laughs> you got to watch it. <laughs> Sounds awesome. I know, Joe. I know. It might not (laughs) be for you. It might not be for you, but I can't tell you how many people, even men, who are like, ah, I I, I got hooked because my wife or my girlfriend watched this. (laughs) No, (laughs) I I will have have, you know I'm on board for the the whole wedding thing. You know, my (laughs) my lovely bride next to me is into all sorts of different wedding shows, and uh, I'll sit and watch them with her, and although there was one that I was not a fan of back in the back in the day, and she's chuckling because she knows which one I'm I'm going to mention. It, um, it's uh, in in well, let's say the 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 name is similar to a very popular uh, Japanese monster. Um, let's just say just say the name of it. It was Brad Bradzillas. Yeah, I he, couldn't he, 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 hated, he hated that, that show. show. So, <laughs> but you know the the. The, you know, say yes to the dress and and the you know, just all the all the married ones getting you know we're getting hitched and all that stuff. That's it's great, you know, I because you know it it's it reinforces for people that you know love is still out there and to embrace yeah. it. You know, Beck and I have been together for 16 years and we're both very proud of that fact. And um, you know, to see you know a couple of young kids start getting started on their new journey in life is, is awesome. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm all for it, you know, and, and I, I do not balk one bit at, uh, at spouse house. I, I hope nothing but the best for these crazy kids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Me too. And congratulations. 16 years. That is, oh, that is amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you. It just happened to us on uh, August 3rd is our anniversary. So yeah, oh. it's uh 
it's yeah. it's hard to believe that it's been that long it's, for me. It's, it's, it's hard it's hard to believe that she's put up with me for that long. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, how much how much input do you have in the uh, creation of shows? Honestly, probably none at all. Maybe in my head, in my office, with the door closed and I'm talking out loud to myself. And I'm like, I wish we did a little bit of this and I wish we did a little bit of that. But I, I'm very, I think I mentioned this earlier, I'm very big about um, staying in my own lane. And we have such incredible producers at Kinetic and they know what they're doing. There are certain points where, of course, if I'm in my office, in the office with, you know, having my meeting with my CEO, I may say like, oh, I wish we did something more like this, or I don't know if that was the best idea. But does he care? Probably not, because I'm overly, <laughs> he knows all of my weaknesses and strengths, and he knows he's put me in this role for a reason. <laughs> but I don't think I have much say. I, again, I, I, I'm one of the few people at the company who listens and watches what everybody online is saying about our shows. So I'm sure the feedback is appreciated. Is it ever applied? Probably not. Um, And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind that. Like, I don't think that what I'm, what I bring to the table is going to change or make anything we produce so much better because it's already so incredible and we have masterminds, but I do, I will report back and say, Hey, you know, this season, this didn't work so well. So if they want to take that into consideration for next season, or this worked really, really well, we should do more of this. If they want to take that into consideration for the next season, they do or they don't. I never am like, Oh, it's because it's because I warned them or because I suggested it. I'm sure that's never the case. It's truly because it it works for what it is they need to do to produce the best possible show, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes sense. I ramble. I apologize. And I think maybe I lost you guys. Yeah, sorry, Pariah. This is Scott. So it looks like they dropped off there. So welcome, everyone. We're still listening to Voices for Change. They'll call right back in. We're having a little problem with their mic. So I'm going to go to a song. This is Tara Naomi, Help You Fly. We're talking to Paria Sadigi right here on Voice for Change 2.0. We'll be right back. I know how misery loves her company Got a party gather around you now They come running from far and wide But who's gonna help you fly? And they come calling when you're falling down Someone always pick you up off the ground Oh, nobody wanna see you cry But who's gonna help you fly? Who's gonna help you fly? Well, the city that I live in feels smaller every day. It's like a little town. People are always gonna help you get by. But who's gonna help you fly? It's a messed up situation when I got the word to call on when the well runs dry. But I just want to celebrate my life. Want to find someone to help me fly. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa
Hey guys, welcome back. We are sorry for uh, if you uh, got to some, any of our technical difficulties. Yeah, there. if you're That's... if you're just tuning in, um, <laughs> yeah, things kind of went kaflooey there for uh, on our end for a minute. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, technology, hey, right? Am yeah, I right? What can you do? So so anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're back with. Paria, and uh, we just have a few more questions for you. Uh, can you share with us a few of your favorite moments with one or more of the shows? Yes. Um, so if you know me, you know that I am a hardcore fan of The View on ABC. Hmm. I have n- okay. I've never, ever, ever, ever in my life missed a single episode. So every season, every episode, I'm there for it. Um, I usually watch at night, whether it be back in college. I'd come home after, you know, work and school, and I'd catch up on that day's episode. Right now I'm like 60 episodes old. Like I have so many on my DVR that I have to catch up on, and I will go back and watch (laughs) that, you know, old, old episodes. Anyways, um, the first season of Little Women L.A., Four of our girls were on The View, so I traveled to New York with them for a two-day press tour. And to be there, to be at The View, to have, to meet the girls um, and have, like, Whoopi come by and say hello. And at one point, she kneeled down to the ladies and said, you know, I love your show. Like, keep doing what you're doing. You're so inspiring. And to witness that was, I didn't think it would be quite as big of a dream come true as it was. I I still look hmm. back on that day with chills. So to be in the green room and then, of course, to watch these women who I adore, both from Little mm-hmm. Women and The View interacting with each other, was so incredible. So that was one of my hands-down favorite press moments ever. Of course, going with Tara and doing Dancing with the Stars was amazing to mm-hmm. be there week to week and to watch her, you know, um, shatter every single ga- uh, glass ceiling because she's so just dynamic and incredible. And then follow her through the red carpet was also so incredible. And um, yeah. I love, I'm, I have not, I think I'm one of the few people at Kinetic who has been at every single Married at First Sight wedding. Um, and I'm about to go to mm-hmm. my sixth season wedding soon here um, to watch strangers get married with your heart in your throat because you have no idea what Mm -hmm. what they'll say, what they'll do. It never gets old. And to be there and to help (laughs) tell their story again on my end from a very, very small, in a very, very small way. um, I never take that for granted. The fact that these folks have signed up and are so brave that they're willing to, you know, trust our experts and trust the process and sign up and then hopefully walk down the aisle to meet. Hopefully they're happily ever after is um, truly such a gift to be there every, every season. Um, we have now, I'm very thrilled to say we have four successfully married couples still from, from married at first sight of the five seasons. And it's, so cool to be able to say that and to see their journey to, to see their love stories continue to grow um, and then hmm. I think one of my other I, uh, just super super favorite favorite moments is seeing a show that um, you know perhaps you people have never ever ever heard of to see it grow and become a huge hit and to see folks like you guys say we are really big fans of little women i mean once upon a time mm-hmm. that show didn't exist and then yeah. six, seven seasons later three years later to sit down with the two of you and to have you say god we love that show that makes everything we do the long hours the long days the is this going to work that makes it all so worth it that's really cool. You yeah. know, and just all of it. I mean, the, the fact that you got to go to the view and, you know, meet everybody there and just that, that combining of, of both worlds that you're, you know, one you've got a hand in and one that you've been on board with from the beginning, watching it back to college. I mean, that's gotta be a, a kind of a surreal feeling for you, but that's, you know, really cool. 
And then, you know, the whole thing with Dancing with the Stars of Terror was just, you know, we enjoyed watching that just mm-hmm. on our end. That was, you know, mm-hmm. after watching her for the last couple of years, and like you said, see her break all these glass ceilings was just, it was awesome. It was, it was really inspiring, you yeah, know. Was, absolutely. She, she was amazing. Yeah. You know, it was just she very, very cool. Force. Yeah. yeah. That woman is a force <laughs> to be reckoned with. Yeah, that's that's about the best way you could put it, I think, too, you know, is just um, I have a uh, a really good question here. Um, We know that with reality TV, you sometimes get drama. Mm -hmm. That being said, have there ever been any moments on the shows where you were worried or concerned for a cast member? Like, oh, maybe that went a little far kind of thing. Yeah, you know, we we know that little women – Every city, our cast can get a bit wild. And I think from a production standpoint and a human standpoint, you never, ever, ever want to see anybody get hurt. But they have right. had some all-out brawls. We've had, you know, chip teeth and hair pulled out and earrings taken off and body slammed, bodies slammed to the floor. Um, we've had... Wow. Uh, uh, the average sized women who have gone in on fights, especially with our Dallas cast um, uh, last season, where, you know, mm-hmm. it just it, it feels like it gets very out of hand and very dangerous. And of course, as, uh, as producers, we do everything possible to make sure we have security there and to make sure people get involved as quickly as possible. But, you know, when emotions get heightened and the fists start flying, I mm-hmm. am, I'm, you know, I'm that girl, and I have been like this since I was a little girl. I can't watch somebody get hit. My entire body shuts down on me, and I kind of mm. have a mini panic attack. Um, so when you watch your your girls, like I call every single person who's on air, uh, on air talent with us, um, I they're my kids. And I'm so protective of them. Right. And to see the bodies flying and to see the glasses flying, to see the fighting happen. While, of course, it makes for really great television, on the flip side, they're humans and they're friends. And right. they get into fights because there's, there's such passion and love and hate there. Um, but I definitely, I have to take a couple moments and sit back and, you know, make sure that I've caught my breath. <laughs> and and it's, it's always hard for me to watch. I watch with kind of my eyes half closed and holding my breath and and then of course I have to make sure that we get the proper clips to press and make sure that fans know that you know everyone's okay and you know so and so Mm -hmm. was rushed to the hospital and protocol was taken to make sure everyone was okay but it's it's crazy yeah definitely crazy that's good yeah we've we watched before and been like, "Oh my God, what you know? What the hell's gonna happen there?" Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so it really bothers I, me when fans online say that we fabricate those fights, that we like it's all yeah. fake, or you know, I'm like, no, there's there's so much passion and heat behind that. Like, this is these are these are girls who have been through a lot together, and then when somebody crosses mm-hmm. the line, it's you know, out of our hands. They're all very. They're all very strong-willed women. Yeah, definitely. You know, so yeah. Um, before before Beck asks asks asks, asks the question <laughs> that she's got, I, I something I, I was really curious about, just a little behind the scenes thing. The when you guys do the reunion shows, um, where they're all on couches and you know mm-hmm. you're highlighting different clips. Where is that actually shot? Is that shot at Kinetic, or do you guys? run out studios in LA to do that? How mm-hmm. does how does that work? Yeah. We great question. We rent out studios in LA that makes sense okay. for the size of our cast and for the look we're going for and basically um we have incredible production management teams at Kinetic Line producers and production managers and coordinators who take the creatives that the producers assemble and they are truly the people who build the homes. They make the magic happen. They have to take all of the stuff that as creatives we get to kind of live up here in the clouds. Our production Mm -hmm. team makes it all happen. So they're figuring out, okay, locations and venue and parking and trucks 
and gear, and I can't go on. And I, I, I mean, I could go on and on about how incredible right. the people behind the scenes are. But yeah, we rent out studio space for the most part. We almost always film all reunion shows in Los Angeles. I don't know if fans know that or hmm. not, but we fly the cast out and we, we film everything in L.A. Hmm, okay. Yeah, I was actually curious about that. So really quickly, we, we don't have um, a heck of a lot of time left with you, but really quickly, could you give us a, a brief glimpse into what uh, the future is for Kinetic Content? I think Kinetic is going to continue shattering its own glass ceiling by, you know, just more more incredible content that you can sink, sink your teeth into. I... Um, I'm really excited for the shows we will be announcing in the coming months. I'm really excited about the shows that I know are in development. Um, we are going to be doing some really fun digital series um, coming out soon. Um, and, yeah, we'll be introducing you to people you'll love, people you'll love to hate, um, and <laughs> shows that I, you know, my, I'm very biased, I know, but – I think um, you'll be seeing shows that you will quickly become very addicted to. So a lot more happening within the hallways of Kinetic. And I I just, again, part of my job is to make sure you know about it. And I cannot wait Mm -hmm. to announce a lot of the things that we are are playing with right now. That's that's, awesome. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It sounds like a lot of good stuff for us to look uh, look forward to yeah, definitely. in the in the coming months. I'll be watching your social media. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you both so much for being fans of the shows, for even wanting to talk to someone like me. I'm usually, you know, I'm the person behind the fun, the real the real talent. So to to have, mm-hmm. want to even for to be given this opportunity has been so much fun, and I truly I love people who are kinetic fans and who are true fans of our shows. And I know that you are Rebecca. You and I have built a long-standing friendship over the last couple of years. So I I mm-hmm. love what you guys are doing. I'm big fans of yours. And and again, thank you oh, for thank this you. opportunity and for spreading the word that you know we're making good television and that entertainment is worth attaching your name to in some capacity. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. We're, we are so glad, glad to have you, and and I'm glad we were able to finally get it scheduled and going, and and just yeah. it's been a delight to have you on the show. Absolutely, it's so, been um, you know it's been a pleasure, especially for me with the whole behind the scenes thing. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for for waking up good and early in LA, and <laughs> you know being on with us. Uh, we're we're very grateful. Absolutely. So st- so Thank stay you. stay on the line with us for for sure. just a moment. And sure, sure. this is uh, Jeremy Jordan and Laura Osnes with Dare to Dream. was labor and life was unkind yet I was determined to press through the fog and the sea so I dared to dream Every day it comes true 
but sadly the future is not up to me or to you. You can't believe all the lies you've been told. You can control your own fate. Listen to what I am saying before it's too late. Where is the boy inside the man? What are his wishes and what is his plan? You'd be a hero held in the highest esteem if you dare to dream. Day after day and night after night, I've lived under orders stayed out of sight. Then suddenly you've come and opened my eyes. And now I can see past the fables and lies. I've longed to be looked at instead of looked through. The future is focused on you. Next week, as Rebecca and Joe continue to battle the stigma of mental illness, follow us on Twitter at Voices for Change RJ and on Facebook at Voices for Change 2.0. Don't miss the mental health memoir of the year. It's not your journey. It's Not Your Journey is the true story of one woman's 20-year battle with mental illness and her recovery from a suicide attempt in 2013. Rebecca Lombardo candidly reveals her real and raw emotions in dealing with depression, bipolar disorder, the loss of her mother and brother, and more. Pick it up today on Amazon.com or visit www.rebeccalombardo.com for more information.